Good evening. This evening I have advised the Governor-General to dismiss Stuart Nash from all of his ministerial portfolios. Late this afternoon I was made aware by a news outlet of an email that Stuart sent in March 2020 to two contacts regarding commercial, a commercial rent relief package that the Cabinet had considered. In the email he sets out both his opposition to the decision Cabinet reached and sets out the position that individual members of the Cabinet took in the discussions. This is a clear breach of Cabinet's collective responsibility and Cabinet confidentiality. Stuart Nash has fundamentally breached my trust and the trust of his Cabinet colleagues. His conduct is inexcusable. In addition, the, the two recipients of the email were donors. Troy Bowker and Greg Loveridge via GRL Holdings Limited have both donated to Stuart Nash. They are also commercial property owners who had an interest in the Cabinet decision. That crosses a line that is totally unacceptable to me. I expect ministers to uphold the highest ethical standards and his actions raise a perception of influence that cannot be allowed to stand. In recent weeks I have sought and been given assurances from Stuart that there were no other instances or allegations of misconduct that I should be aware of. While Stuart was on a final warning, I want to be clear that this incident alone would have resulted in his dismissal in its own right. I consider the matter to be a very serious one. Megan Woods will be the Acting Minister for Economic Development and Acting Minister of Forestry. David Parker will be the Acting Minister for Oceans and Fisheries. And Mika Whaiteri will lead the Hawke's Bay Site Bone Response on an acting basis. What is it that to him now? Uh, he um, certainly is not a minister as of tonight. Um, the decisions around, uh, you know, contesting the next election, are, are, you know, or, or those decisions are matters for the party and um, decisions that have not yet been taken. When you say it was, when you said, um, look, I've dismissed him from the cabinet. Um, that is, that is the power that is available to me. How much of a how much of a factor was the fact he was disclosing this to his own donors? Uh, look, it certainly adds to um, the problem. Disclosing those conversations in the first place was inappropriate. The fact that they were disclosed to people who had donated to his campaigns, um, I think, adds to the perceptions of a conflict, but also is just utterly unacceptable. Was it, was it a conflict of interest? Sorry, what was what, that? Was there a conflict of interest there? Well, whether there's a conflict or a perception of conflict, it was utterly inappropriate. Could you walk us through the events of how this played out? When did you get the email? Did you invite Stuart Nash up to your office and tell him in person? How did this play out? Uh, I was made aware of it at about five o'clock. Um, I met with Stuart just shortly after that, probably sometime around quarter past uh, five. Um, I then had a conversation, as I would do in these matters, with the Cabinet Office, um, and then uh, had a further conversation with Stuart. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had my facts correct before making a final decision. Then, obviously, the last uh, the last sort of three quarters of an hour has been on the formalities. There is a process that you have to go through, including um, I have to speak to the Governor General, which I've done, um, and um, appoint acting minister. Can we just return? No, he did not. Prime Minister, could you trust Stuart Nash, and could you work with him in his own capacity um, Stuart won't be coming back as a minister. Yeah, but, yeah, but what about what about as a what about as a caucus colleague? You have you have your caucus though. What about as a member of parliament? Um, look, ultimately, that's not a decision for me. There, there are uh, you know wider decisions uh, for the party there. Um, of course, you know, as, as the leader of the party, I have a view on that, but that's not something that I. That, that, that's, a, that's a that's a different process. But what is your what is your view? He has broken your trust. Can you trust anything that you say that anything that you say to Stuart Nash won't be repeated? Um, as I've indicated, um, he's not. He's no longer a cabinet minister, and he won't be coming back but, as a cabinet but, minister. But, 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 yes. Um, look, I didn't need to. The, the, the facts as they stand, the facts as I've just set out, were sufficient for his dismissal. Uh, on what the facts of this case alone, that was enough. Even, even without the events of several weeks ago, that would have been enough. Were you, were you Prime Minister? Did you know there have been other suggestions about Nash's relationship with donors? Is there a case for investigating all of his relationships with his donors? 
Um, ultimately, uh, that all of his donations are publicly disclosed. Um, in this particular instance, it's very clear um, that he should not have been communicating with them in the way that he was. Prime Minister, were you, were you? Were you? Were you? That's not something that I'm in a position to make any comment on tonight. Um, you know, clearly, um, the, the authority that vests with me as Prime Minister is to r recommend to the Governor General a Minister's dismissal from Cabinet. That's what I've done. Prime Minister, were you, were you, were you, were you, were you ask the party to look at this as well? Are you planning to do that? Um, I imagine that there will be further conversations. Um, Stuart Will himself will be reflecting on his position, uh, and I imagine that there will be further conversations. Prime Minister, were you, were you naive to believe, Stuart Nash, that there was nothing else? You can't. I don't believe that you should dismiss somebody without an evidential base for doing that. Um, two weeks ago, when I looked at the material on the balance of the information that I had at the time, I was comfortable with the decision that I made at the time. Clearly, had I had this information, there would have been a different decision. But given the ongoing nature of his behaviour, should you not have seen then that there was a pattern of disregard for any kind of rule? As I indicated, this was not information I had two weeks ago. Um, had I had that inf this information two weeks ago, the decision then would have been different. Prime Minister, um, what, did, what did Stuart Nash say when you confronted him with this? Uh, he didn't put up a defence. Uh, he accepted the, um, the seriousness of the situation. Uh, he offered his resignation. I did not accept it, um, and I indicated to him that I was going to dismiss him. Did, why, he, why did, he, give a, did he give a justification? You know, as no. why he's done it. No, he why, why did you? Why did you take that step? Is his resigning not a strong enough message? No, I think that this is a serious matter, um, as I've indicated. Um, I think the, bre the very, it's a very clear case of breaching cabinet's collective responsibility and cabinet confidentiality. The fact that um, the people he disclosed this information to were donors adds to that uh, significantly. Um, and so, in my view, um, th th this was the only appropriate course of action for me as Prime Minister. What about the, what about the questions that yes, have been raised Prime about this? Minister, did you even see this coming, or did this really surprise you? Was there an inkling that Stuart Nash was capable of this? Uh, look, had I been aware of this two weeks ago, as I indicated, the decision would have been different. Um, had I foreseen it coming, uh, the decision would have been different. I didn't. How angry are you about all of this? Um, well, I think you can probably take it from my tone and from the speed with which I made the decision um, that this was not something I had to think a long time about. Clearly, um, I've, I've asked Stuart repeatedly over the last few weeks whether there are other things that I should have been aware of. He indicated that there weren't. Um, I received his reassurances on that. Clearly, um, that was incorrect. Are you, are you, pa are you passing the point? Uh, whatever the situation, it was not acceptable. Are you past the point of caring? About, that? Are you past the point of caring about Stuart Nash? Um, look, I. I've worked with Stuart for a long time. I'm absolutely gutted, to be frank. Yeah. Well, just, can you just, just as much about, about your judgment on this, on this issue? Uh, no, because as I said, this was not information that I was aware of uh, two weeks ago, and had I been aware of it, the decision would have been different. And just to be clear on the seriousness of the breach, are you aware if he's done it before? Did you ask him and are you going to investigate if he has breached cabinet rules before? Um, I didn't in the, in the very short conversation that we had this evening. Um, I, certainly there will be an opportunity to look back over um, you know, any past instances and so on. Um, I've not done that in the last two hours. Um, there will be you know, time to do that in due course. But you this, was, this, was a, this was a black and white issue. Um, the decision was a very quick one. What would that process look like? So will you go and say, right, Stuart, we're going to meet at some point and go, and go through all of these potential instances, or is it going to be without him and with that input? Or? Um, look, clearly, if there's, if there's anything further that is inappropriate, um, then I'm probably not the right person to investigate that. There are other people with the remit to do that. That's not me. Prime Minister, you do my, 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 de my decision ultimately is whether someone should remain a minister. I've made that decision. So I made it very clearly. Um, as I've indicated, I've, um, that's not something I've turned my mind to yet. So um, I had to make some relatively quick decisions to appoint some acting ministers. They'll be in place for a, a week or two uh, while I work through that process. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, look, I think um, this was an utterly unacceptable situation. As soon as I became aware of it, I've been aware of it for about two hours now, um, I immediately made some decisions and set in process, um, you know, set and train the process um, to be standing here now. Is it, is is it hard? On his electorate seat. He's, Sorry, was still, that? he's still MP for Napier. Uh, he will be MP for Napier. He's MP for Napier as of right now, yes. Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Um, look, as I've said, I'm sure Stuart will be reflecting on his position over the next little while. Um, I will leave him to make further comment on that. Prime Minister, my election though, if you went now, is that something you'd be prepared to deal with? Um, look, that's, that's all speculation. Have you asked him to do this reflecting, or is that something that he's doing? Uh, um, I, I, yes, I did, and, and, and I'm confident that he will. Prime Minister, you do seem really gutted about this. Is it hard having to sack a mate? Um, Sacking people is not easy. Um, in this particular case, I didn't feel that there was any other option, though. This is absolutely um, inexcusable. Um, look, I, I don't know what he became aware of. As I said, the conversation that I had with him was relatively short because it's a very clear-cut situation, and I wanted to make a decision, and I wanted to get on with that very quickly. Um, I became aware of it at five o'clock. Uh, look, I've, I've already done that um, repeatedly. Um, I did that at the very first cabinet meeting that I chaired as prime minister, um, and have reminded my colleagues of their obligations several times since. Given given the cabinet makeup at that time, and given the um, conversations that were being had in public by other coalition members about what happened at the cabinet table. Do you think Stuart Nash took his lead from those other coalition partners? Um, look, I, I can't comment on the decisions that were taken back then. I was not the Prime Minister back then. Um, this is clearly unacceptable to me, um, and I certainly stand by my decisions. In your time, in your time, in your time in politics, have you seen uh, any clearer and more blatant breaches of two cabinet, um, two cabinet rules, essentially, like that? Uh, this is absolutely cut and dry. It is very, very clear um, that, uh, in fact, there's probably more than two, um, two breaches of the Cabinet Manual, and um, there really isn't any question about it. I, ju I just want to go back to the questions we were asking you around trust, now that you've had a little bit of time to reflect on it. Can you trust Stuart Nash to be in caucus? Look, as I've indicated, that's not a decision that I've even turned my mind to at this point. With respect to uh, Uh, at, at the moment, Mika Faisali, who is a local member of parliament as well and also an existing minister, is filling in in that role um, while I make further decisions. So, um, I, 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 look, I haven't even begun to think about that in the last two hours. A few other things on the go, um, but now I will turn my mind to that in the coming days. Are you satisfied that all of Nash's decisions as a minister have been made with the utmost focus? Um, I've not seen any evidence to the contrary, but in the event that, um, that there is any evidence to the contrary that will need to be fully investigated. Well, the other, well, the other thing is you, you appointed him as forestry minister when he clearly has donations from the woodmilling industry. How does that stack up? Stuart was already the forestry minister when I um, became the, the prime minister. Um, so, uh, but look, clearly this was, <coughs> um, as I've indicated, inexcusable. And I'm not going to make but, excuses, but his excuses behavior, for it. But his behaviour around donors in this instance suggests that you know, he, he doesn't care about those rules and he could have put you in jeopardy. Like I said, um, had I been aware of this two weeks ago, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, some of the decisions I made at that time would have been different. Are you starting? 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 No, and I want to be clear here. There's no evidence to suggest that they have acted in any way that's inappropriate. Um, uh, this, is, this is on Stuart. Are you they starting to... Re it in 2020, though. What was that? It happened three years ago, so it wasn't raised then. I mean, are you worried? Like, it's a massive blind spot, right? Three years of potential cabinet breaches. Uh, look, as I've, as I've indicated, I can only comment on um, the decision that I've taken today based on the information that I have now. Um, as soon as I became aware of the information, I took action about it. Are you I, I will wrap up in a minute, Jessica. What's happening with Stuart Nash at the moment? What are the plans for him? Is he going back home? And is there any support being wrapped around him? What? Yeah, he has a couple of people um, providing some support to him at the moment. <laughs> Um, the decisions over the next few days will be um, his decisions ultimately about whether he stays here or, or heads home. Was he angry with you? No. Are you starting Was he angry at all? 
Uh, no, I think he was pretty gutted. Um, look, as I've indicated, I um, uh, haven't turned my mind to that, and I imagine that he will turn his mind to that fairly promptly. Does Are you starting to regret taking up the mantle of Prime Minister? This isn't the first time you've had to do something like this. Uh, look, by and large, I'm enjoying the role. I certainly haven't enjoyed the, the last two hours, though. Do you have enough money in the coffers to pay for by-election if necessary? Um, we'll cross that bridge if we come to it. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank